Hello everybody, my name is Amir. Uh, I work for Anybody Technology and today I'm going to present you uh, a little study that has been uh, shown uh, at the conference at the Combined Orthopedic Research Society in Venice. So this uh, presentation is about the Glasgow Maastricht Anybody Foot Model to predict internal loads in the foot. So first of all, why do we need a detailed foot model? So there are several diseases in the foot that cause pain, inflammation and tissue degeneration and in order to study the inside of the, the inside biomechanics of the foot further knowledge for treatments is necessary. In vivo measurements are not possible or very difficult to, uh, to perform and also in vitro measurements that are more feasible uh, using cadavers are neglecting active muscle elements, so they are not really physiological. Uh, in simulations, uh, you can do a lot, uh, simulate the foot biomechanics. However, when you look into literature, most models that are there up to date uh, are simplified and use only one to five uh, bone segments. So the objective of this study was to develop a fully detailed model with all 26 bones of the human foot and the corresponding joints. It should also include intrinsic and extrinsic muscles, major ligaments uh, and uh, as much informa information as possible. So this work was uh, part of the A Footprint project. You find here a link uh, uh, at afootprint.eu. Uh, and in there, Anybody Technology in cooperation with the Glasgow Caledonian University and the University Hospital Maastricht developed uh, a detailed foot model. So first of all, Anybody uses the principle of inverse dynamics. That means motion is input and external forces are input as well and forces uh, inside the, the, the human uh, are output. So that means on the left hand side here you see a typical motion capture recorded trial. So a subject walking uh, over force platforms and then on the right hand side here you see the acting muscle forces in the muscles and then also you get joint reaction forces and of course muscle activations. So for this project, uh, we got for 20 to 25 subjects, motion capture files, foot pressure files, uh, force plates uh, information, foot surface scans, and additionally also CT scans of all the bones and EMG for all the recorded trials. So we could set up based on the, uh, the CT scans, uh, so using all the bones of the subjects, we could set up uh, a model. So all the bones were connected with joints. So we had three different kind of joints in there, revolute joints, universal joints and spherical joints. You see it in, in this, those three different colors. And that means revolute joints have one degree of freedom, universal joints two, spherical three degrees of freedom. So all this data is based uh, on literature data and findings uh, from, from other studies. Additionally, uh, kinematic constraints had to be uh, introduced in order to run the model. So on the left hand side in the picture you see that uh, ellipsoids have been introduced to represent the metatarsal heads and then there was a constraint introduced that uh, a kinematic constraint to, uh, cons uh, to force uh, those ellipsoids to be in contact during the gate trial. On the right hand side you see the same for the tarsal area, so for the cuneiform bones and the cuboid bone. Additionally, four uh, arches or rhythms have been introduced to describe the foot curvatures. So these are based on mathematical functions to describe this curvature. So most of the muscles have been already in the model from the previous uh, normal foot model but of course it was not as accurate so the, the, the information on the muscles and uh, origin and insertion points in the foot area had to be uh, changed and adapted and also ligaments uh, connecting all the, the different bones had to be inserted 
all this data, origin, insertion points, and mechanical properties of the ligaments is taken from literature. Here you see uh, some uh, literatures, uh, literature uh, studies that have been used there for. Uh, on top of that, scaling of the model so had been defined to use uh, as simple as possible to use the foot surface scans. That means uh, by uh, defining the foot surface scan outside, uh, you can scale the inside, so the bones itself. So we had uh, the the surface gain of the of the standard subject defined with 60 landmarks, and if you want to analyze a new foot, you make a foot surface scan, uh, choose or define those 60 landmarks on your new subject, and then the model, so the inside the bones, will be scaled uh, according to this new model. I have also a little uh, video prepared that shows how that works. This video is also separately available on, on the YouTube channel. So you can load an STL. I'm going to go uh, through it very quick. So you can load an STL. Uh, you can load then a little macro file that will, so it's called pick points option. Uh, so that will have 16 landmarks in there. For example, the heel back. And then you can, I'm going to scroll forward a little bit. Then you can identify those 16 landmarks uh, in the foot and then finally you can save that file uh, and then this file will be used so this pick points file will be used uh, later on in the model to uh, run or to scale the foot. I mentioned before motion capture was recorded here you see uh, on the left side uh, markers on a subject um, so this protocol was developed uh, with Glasgow and Maastricht universities together uh, and it's published as Osterwahl et al. Um, on the right hand side here you see the same markers on the, on the model of the foot. So this was used to drive the model. Um, force plate data provided the force and the direction of the force applied to the foot and then the pressure plate provided the load distribution to all 26 segments. So there were 180 nodes defined on the foot on all different segments and then the pressure plates give the, gives the distribution and then according to the measured pressure plate data uh, the, this, these lo this load is applied to the foot. So here very briefly again the workflow we have motion capture to drive the model, we have foot scan data to scale the model and we have combined pressure plate and force plate data to apply the, the external loads to the model. So you will get an animation and you will get anybody to, to predict the muscle activations and muscle forces and joint forces uh, for this trial. So you will get for each joint uh, in the foot, let's say between uh, medial cuneiform and metatarsal 1, you will get uh, joint reaction forces, you will get for each ligament uh, in, the, in the foot uh, the, the loads uh, during the skate cycle and of course for all muscles uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in this right leg in this case, you will get the muscle activation and muscle forces. Of course uh, Validation has been made of this model, so the model has been compared to several uh, literature data and to several other studies. Here's a very short overview of what has been done. So the model has been compared, uh, so the range of motion of certain joint angles has been compared to findings from literature. So there was, for example, a study here on the left-hand side, you see it from Lundgren et al. in 2008, that measured with bone pens the range of motion here, for example, for the talonavicular plantar flexion. And then we have uh, simulated the model to do the same. And then you see, the, even though the curves are not matching completely each other to each other, the overall motion is very, very similar. So, uh, I have to mention here, red is the predicted force by anybody, blue is measured by uh, the study. 
the right hand side you see a study we have we have done so from care at all did in 1987 a cadaver study where he fixed the ankle joint and pressed it to onto a force plate the, the forefoot onto a force plate and the, then he measured the loads for the full foot and then he stripped one by one uh, the ligaments uh, of the, the the foot and then he measured again the forces during during all those uh, steps and we have performed the same uh, virtually and we could find very similar results you might see that we have a more linear behavior of the ligaments compared to what has been measured uh, in this in this cadaver study but nevertheless I think the the overall results look uh, very similar also, I mentioned before the EMG that was measured during uh, the all trials. So we of course com compared muscle activations in anybody to EMG signals. And uh, once again, uh, not all curves are matching perfectly, but I think the overall uh, result was very promising so that uh, anybody predicts very similar muscle activations compared to uh, what has been measured with EMG. So as a conclusion, detailed models of the foot are needed and in order to understand the function and loading conditions inside. Um, we could reproduce known results for validation. So what is we took, as I said before, we took what is out there in, in literature and could reproduce several of those results. So we could give also some insight into new facts but uh, this is just the start, more will come of course. So the detailed foot model has been released to public uh, earlier this year and it can be found in the Anybody Mon Managed Model Repository. Currently we try to use this model uh, to develop insoles for foot for certain pathological feet like flat foot, metatarsalgia uh, and we also try to see how will the foot react to different insoles. We can also use this model to predict or to create very detailed uh, FE models here in this case for the calcaneus. So you can look into calcaneus, calcaneus fractures uh, in FE models like uh, abacus or ansys. You could also do that for metatarsal bones or, or whatever bone are in, in the foot. We have also tried uh, to make this, this application using the foot model as simple as possible. So we created a graphical user interface and I have a, a little animation prepared here as well. Uh, you should also find this uh, video in the next days uh, on the YouTube channel uh, where I describe the function of this model. You can see here a graphical user interface has been developed where you can type in data, you can import the loading data, here in this case it's the pressure plate data and you can also load those pick points to scale the model and you can define certain parameters in this model. I'm not going show, to show anything, everything in here now, um, I think you, you can find it separately on YouTube. So for now I want to thank the A Footprint project for funding this uh, development of this model. Uh, you see here also all the partners that have been involved in this project. I want to thank all my co-authors, all anybody, especially Aalborg University, the Glasgow Caledonian University, Maastricht University and Anybody Technology uh, and of course the whole musculoskeletal uh, and simulation community. As mentioned before, this project was funded by the Footprint project uh, in, uh, inside the European Commission's seventh framework program. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at aa at anybodytech.com or look at to our homepages, either the anyscript.org uh, forum and community homepage or really at the anybodytech.com side of anybody technology. Thank you for looking by here. Please f uh, feel free to look uh, further around if you see any other interesting animations and videos, how we explain models and give tips and tricks in this YouTube channel.